So today is 4.2, simplifying rational expressions. So when we're simplifying rational expressions, there's kind of three main steps. Our first step is we always want to factor. Okay, numerator and denominator, so top and bottom. Okay, the next thing we always want to do before we deal with any sort of simplification is find those NPVs. Okay, and so it's important to do this before we simplify because even if one of your factors of x simplifies out and isn't in the denominator in the end, it's still considered part of your NPV. So you don't want to simplify it out by dividing and then discover that you've missed an NPV because of that. Okay, our third step is the actual simplification, and that's where we divide by a GCF. By a GCF. So that's where we're actually going to start crossing things out and simplifying. Okay? So we're going to do three examples with this. So our first example is going to be pretty straightforward. So what I want us to do is we're going to go negative 24 x squared and let's go 18 x cubed okay so when we're looking at these one of the things I want us to do is I want us to almost think of it as being two different pieces okay so I'm gonna put a dotted line there okay. so when we look at this as almost two pieces one thing we can think about is okay on the one side we have the fraction negative 24 over 18 and I want to reduce that Okay, so if I wanted to reduce that fraction, the thing I would want to do is I can divide it by 6. Okay, top and bottom, right? It's got to be reduced by the same thing. One thing that's kind of handy is that with our graphing calculators, uh, we can actually put negative 24 divided by 18 and use our graphing cal calculator to divide that fraction for us and simplify it. Okay, so if we divide negative 24, we get 4. We divide 18 by 6, we get 3. Okay, then I want to look at our variables, so the x squared and the x cubed. If I'm looking at things to divide it by, I can say, okay, if I divide the top by x squared and I divide the bottom by x squared, right, I know, okay, I'm left with 1x on the bottom still, so I get negative 4 over 3x. Okay, so you're welcome to look at this and think about the 24x squared and the 18x cubed as one package and divide both of them by 6x squared, okay? That's a really good way of doing it, but I find lots of times students, right? So you're allowed to divide by 6x squared completely, you'll get the same answer. But I find a lot of the times students get kind of caught up in it and sometimes it helps if it's almost like we break it into two parts, the coefficients and the variables. Okay. One thing that we forgot to do so far, or haven't done yet, I guess, is that we always, 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 as our answer, want to state our NPVs. So because we have one factor and it's no addition or subtraction, we know that x cannot equal 0. Okay. The second example is a little bit tougher. So in this one, if I look at something like 15x cubed minus 5x, all over 15x cubed. Okay, so let's go back to our start page. It says the very first thing we need to do is factor it. Okay, so let's factor the top and the bottom. So if I look at my numerator, the top, I say, okay, there's a GCF there of 5x, so that goes in front, and then 15x cubed divided by 5x gives me 3x squared minus 1. Right, so if I'm dividing something, like I have 5x divided by 5x, I know that I'm going to be left with 1 here. Okay, so it's not 0, it's always 1. Our bottom is just a monomial, so we can't factor it. Okay, so once we've factored it, factored it, we know we want to state those NPVs. So let's quickly say, okay, we know that x cannot equal 0 because it's a monomial on the bottom. Now let's actually get into simplifying. So if I look at my two factors on the top, the 3x squared minus 1 has to stay there. There's nothing on the bottom that matches that, right? So I know my 3x squared minus 1 
will be on the top still. If I look at my 5x though and my 15x cubed, I say okay, 5 over 15, okay, that can be reduced to 1 over 3. And x over x cubed, okay, that can be reduced to x squared. Okay, so the thing that I'm actually dividing out is I'm dividing by 5x on the top and the bottom. Okay, 5x is my GCF. Okay, and then that gives us our answer of 3x squared minus 1 over 3x squared. Okay, something that I really want you to be careful of is I don't want you to look at this and say, oh, 3x squared minus 1 over 3x. Oh, let's cross out and simplify these 3x's. Okay, we can't do that. So make sure that if you have a binomial on the top, you're not simplifying with it with a monomial. The 3x squared and the negative 1 on the top, or the minus 1, are attached. They cannot be separated by simplification. Okay? If we look at our last example we're going to do, okay, we have, let's make it a tougher one. Okay, so we have 6x squared minus 8x, and on the bottom we'll do 3x cubed cubed minus 4x squared. Okay, so first things first is we know we need to factor this on the top and the bottom. So on the top I say, okay, 6x squared minus 8x. I can take 2x out, leaving me with 3x minus 4. Okay, so that's the top. On the bottom, well, 3 and 4 have no GCF, but th or but x cubed and x squared, I can take an x squared out. So 3x minus 4 on the bottom as well. Okay, And that's something we know is always a good sign when I say, okay, I start to see matches up, right? If I didn't take my GCF out of the bottom, I might have had 3x squared minus 4x. And when I compare that to the top, that's kind of a red flag. Like normally we get something that matches. Okay, so before we start doing anything, we need to look for our NPV. And so Let's do that in blue. Okay, so if I'm looking at it, I have two different x's, so I need two different NPVs. Okay, so first of all, for our x squared, I know that x cannot equal 0. Okay, and then for my 3x minus 4, I know that that's a tougher kind of NPV to find, so I'm going to go 3x minus 4. That's not allowed to equal 0. And so when I'm solving this, I'm going to say, okay, well, if I add 4 on both sides, okay, that gives me 3x is equal or cannot equal positive 4. Okay, and I want to isolate x. It's just like solving for x, except it's x cannot equal instead of x does equal. Right? So we're going to divide by 3, like that. And then my 3's cross out. Okay, and then I get x cannot equal 4 over 3. Okay, so I have two different NPVs, so make sure you deal with that before you start crossing things out. Okay, now that that's dealt with, we can move on to step three and find our GCF. So if I look at the top and the bottom, I know, okay, I see a match here. So 3x divided, or 3x minus 4 can definitely be divided out of both. That's the easy one. And then I start to look at 2x and x squared. So if I look at my 2, there's nothing on the bottom that divides with that. So I know the 2 in the numerator is going to be part of my answer. Equals 2. And if I look at the x's, I have a single x on the top and an x squared on the bottom. So I know if I want to divide it, I'd lose 1 on the top and 1 on the bottom. So as my final answer, I just get 2 over x. Okay, so that's all there is to simplification of rational expressions.